Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rewind and Replay. I'm Matan. I'm Adriana. And I'm Caitlin. And today we are talking about Supermassive's dark anthology, Little Hope. We played this game on stream not long ago, about Last a week, week. A week yep. from when this episode is airing, a week in the past from when this episode is airing. Um, the video recording is up on our YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Um, and we should be posting some highlights on our socials as well. Heck yeah. Um, yeah, um, if you like people shitting themselves, tune yeah. in, because that game was fucking scary. If you like Adriana scaring herself out of existence. That was the best clip, I think, from the, from the stream. <laughs> no, I don't, I still, I think that I did it by accidentally tapping the earbud. I still don't know. You guys. Or my ghost sent you out. Yeah, your tech Ooh. ghost. Ooh, I okay. bought a new Ouija board. Yeah? yeah, talk to talk yeah. to it. See what's see what it's yeah. why it's messing with you. Oh, I was gonna grab it and show you guys. I left it in the other room though. Um, but I got it from Spirit. They were doing fifty percent mm -hmm. off of the entire store yesterday, and I went and I found a Ouija board. Wow, nice. the last one. Has um, some deals, right? So, if you don't know, this is a a game that is part of a th anthology series called Dark Pictures. The first one is Man of Medan which we all played before we started Rewind and Replay. Mm -hmm. We played together. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, this is the same company that made Until Dawn. And there's one more coming of the Dark Anthology mm -hmm. series called House of Ashes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, I mean, this anthology is notably very different from Until Dawn, mm -hmm. but tonally really similar. And they've got overlapping mechanics. Um, so, like, it feels like one cohesive universe, which is... Really could good. Be. I think it adds some depth to it. Yeah. It could be. Could be. Maybe that's what they'll do in the last one, tie it all together. Yeah. Um, yeah more so more. what did you guys think of, I mean, just like as a clean like blanket statement, like what did you guys think of this game? How does it stack up to Man of Medan? I liked it a lot. Um, I think it was scarier than Man of Medan. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think overall I may have liked it better. I don't know. I keep going back and forth, but I don't know if it's just because it's more recent, like fresh, right. but I like it better right now, or mm -hmm. if it's because I do think it's a better game. I think I'd have to go back and play Man of Medan again since it's been like, what, like six or seven months since we played it. Yeah. Um, it yeah, I mean, I, I agree that I, it's, it's scarier, I think. Um, yeah. But they also... I can see where people disagree because they leaned in really heavy on the jump scares, which if you do too much can like cheapen the feeling. I mean, it got me every time, <laughs> but you yeah. know, I get you. It's not exactly what you want to do for every game. And they didn't do it for Man of Medan really. Like it wasn't that scary. So I can see why they did for this one to kind of like yeah. contrast the two. So I like that a lot, but the characters felt not as interesting. Yeah. I definitely yeah. preferred Man of Medan characters. I think that for me, Man of the Dan takes it. Um, I agree with I agree with both of you that I think this game was scarier. I also think they leaned a little hard on the jump scares, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but I the yeah I um, I like witches. I like the like witch trial like stuff around witch trials. I think it's interesting. Um, I like the way that. I guess my issue, we should start at the beginning, but I think that my, my issues more come in at the end. Mm -hmm. Like I, the ambiance of this game is great. And the way it starts off is like really, really strong. Like small town, bus diverted, gets in a crash, mysterious things are going wrong. Um, yeah. I also like the, I liked the characters more at first. Um, they have their sort of different archetypes uh, there's like, you know, the cool kind of bumbling teacher. There's the like edgier guy, the nerdier guy, this, the older woman, um, who's kind of like prim and, and well, not, prim is the wrong word, but kind of snobby. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the unfortunate thing is that we were learning a lot about their characters from the flashbacks to the witch trials mm. more than like in the current moment about their characters. Like a lot of like the side dialogue was just like, oh, like, do you feel that? Or like, I don't uh -huh. have a good feeling about this, which is really generic, you know, sure. which, but like think... the witch trial part felt really strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Present. And if you, well, cause the way I see it and, 
we're gonna get into spoilers obviously if you haven't figured that out yet um yeah <laughs> so obviously this is all inside of is andrew right that's the main guy's name or is that his yes name? yeah i always forget because there was like two i don't names know if there. that's actually andrew. it's it was an a name i don't think that's actually his name yeah what was it it was an A name because I because I remember Abraham was the one in the past. Yeah. Um, I, wrote, I think his actual name is like the 1980s name. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. But which Andrew was the one they were calling him though, and then Anthony is in the name. present. Yeah. So Andrew was what okay. he was being called yeah. during the game, but Anthony was his 1980s, like his real right. name. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna call him Andrew because that's what he was called throughout most of the game. Um, yeah. But we're seeing the characters through his lens because it's all his, like, it's all in his head is what we find out at the end. Right. So it's like, even though we are seeing these characters in the flashbacks and stuff, it's still how he viewed them. So I don't know. I feel like we never get, except for the very beginning, we never get a clear view of who these characters actually were. We're always seeing it through his lens. Well, yeah, I agree. Cause it, yeah, I... Which explains why they fell flat. Right, yeah. that's a good point. Um, I think I liked his character. I like that actor. I don't know his name, but he's been in a lot of stuff. He was in um, Maze Runner. I like mm-hmm. him. Um, and I think all the actors did a very good job. Yeah. Um, and I just like, mm-hmm. um, I, again, ambiance was solid, but once you get to the end, it feels like they had like five really solid ideas for this game and like the sort of conceit of it. And then they kind of mix them together. And to me, it kind of fell apart at the end. Um, Because I really like the multiple generations. I like that mystery of like, we're seeing ourselves in the past and like we, the viewer saw them in the eighties as well as the witch trials. So we know there's some weird sort of thing going on with like repeating with people repeating, getting stuck in some sort of time loop or being reborn or what have you. I thought maybe it was purgatory, you know. Um, Which would have been really cool. Yes. Um, And then, but like, then when we realize, oh, it's all in Andrew's head and it was because of a, like the trauma that he was dealing with from the 80s, how does that at all connect to the witch trials? Well, I mean... Oh, go ahead. <clears throat> well, I was just going to say, you know, I mean, like, I think a big theme in the witch trials, or topic, really, is that issue of guilt and blame. Mm. Um, and, you know, pointing fingers to get out of the situation. And so, I, I mean, like, I could tell, like, this is a very apt, me- like, I don't, th- I did not think that witches were, like, an actual supernatural force in the game like I was thinking like time loop maybe or purgatory or whatever sure but at no point did I think because this is Salem witch trials it's like evil witches or whatever um because I could feel just because like with context frontal dawn and man of Medan, like they're really playing into I think the mental health aspect like nothing mm-hmm. actually scary is happening like physically happening um, which is like what made it make sense, but was also a little bit disappointing. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. And so the way I looked at the witch thing was I looked at it as why did Anthony slash Andrew, why was his mind thinking of witches? And like, why did his mind go to that rather than why did the creators think of witches? Because like, I think a big part of, of why they chose witches would be why Anthony thought of witches because it's his mind that's creating this so Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons well the town he did that that's true yeah the town is a big reason and then um I think he was interested in the town history and like witch history himself because Mm -hmm. if you go back I went back and uh watched the beginning of the game again because Mm, smart for for me the stream was really bad at the beginning and I could like barely understand what was happening Yeah. yeah me too um yeah, so I just went back and, like, rewatched like, the first, like, 20 minutes. Um, and you find, like, witchcraft books around the house, or at least, like, one of them. And, I'm, like, I'm guessing mm-hmm. it's his, and he's just interested in that. So when mm-hmm. his brain goes and, like, creates this whole scenario for him, because he was so interested in, like, witches and witchcraft, that's what his brain created. Right. 
That's interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I think, and I definitely got the sense at the end that like this would be a better game on the second playthrough. Like once you understand what's happening, like I was more interested in going back and looking for more, like more of the secrets and the hidden stuff to kind of understand what was happening because it was a little bit of a letdown at the first time, um, maybe the second time, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yes, I think that's an interesting point. I think I like your point, Adriana, about it connecting to deals of guilt and blame because like he feels guilty for the deaths of his family. That's a good point of like a thematic connection. Um, what Fucking is still Tanya, dude? Mm, yeah. <laughs> the way she died, like Getting, holy well, shit. With, with the scarf, that was insane. Yeah. So I went back and looked at the man. Like that is guilt. Definition. That is literal. Yeah. So oh. the premonition of Mana Madan was Tanya's death. Right. Yeah. And so that's what you see her being hung. So um, that's a, another thing I'm kind of confused. Like a lot of this stuff, fe again, like feels like a good idea that wasn't perfectly executed. I was always confused about the premonitions because I see them coming, but they're not any sort of guidance. Like I there's no. Well, I, don't know. I, I always have felt like they are. There's, um, there's no way to save Tanya. Well, Okay, so the way I see this one is there's two choices. You can either go and save Megan or you can save Tanya. Mm -hmm. um, and if you choose to go save Megan, and this was, I watched another playthrough and the person chose to save Megan. And I was kind of glad to be able to see the two differences. Yeah. So if yeah. you go and choose to try to save Megan, uh, you'll run inside and she'll still burn to death, like what you see in, um, when you go to save Tanya. Yeah. Um, but then you'll run back out and then... Tanya, instead of trying to climb down, she goes back through the window and she gets burned alive inside the house, which I think is super interesting because later in the game, it then changes her, um, like, witch, like, from the past oh. that comes to kill her. So instead, when they go and they see her execution, she's burned at the stake instead of hung. Gotcha. That's interesting. Yeah. So I think the premonition was telling you, like, there's nothing you can do at that one because, and I think in this game in general, there's nothing really you could do because everyone was going to die no matter what. But, like, in Man and Medan, I felt they were helpful. There were a few times I remember specifically being like, oh, this was the scene I saw. This is how I need to make it happen. Gotcha. Sure. That makes, that makes sense. Yeah. I wonder, so, like, we got everyone dead. You know, everyone died. Um, <laughs> the QTEs were hard. We were freaking. Everyone Especially died. when we did it over the control play. There, that was difficult. Yeah. yeah, Steam remote play is fucking hard. So yeah. we killed everyone. Um, but, but I wonder what the end. Well, I don't know that that's true. Like maybe they would have. I don't know what that. I mean, they would have died at the house in the end. I just wonder what that would have been like if they, if we hadn't gotten them killed to their demons. Yeah, because we have kept them alive longer. Yeah, I think maybe I think, a little like so all the way to the end, like we did with the dad. But could they have survived that long? Is my question. That's a I good don't question. Know. I wonder. So. Like, the premonition with Angela, I think, was telling you to go straight to Angela instead of helping, like, John. Sure. So, if you had helped her, I don't know if that would have saved her, though, or if she still would have died. Because I think part of it is Andrew slash Anthony's guilt of not being able to save his family. Like, every single time, like you said, with the guilt and the witch right. trials, every single time, he is the person you're playing that has the option of, or not even the option, but he's the one with the quick time events where you're trying to yeah. save them. It's either him right. or the person who's- And you pick that up early too in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think, again, like was this very subtle way of the game devs to like be like, this game is about Andrew. Right. Like this is not- That was a good design choice. Yeah. Um, um, I did want to add to like with Tanya's death, that is so witch trials, like her choking on her scarf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Oof. and I think, I mean, I don't know what's up in 1980s, his life, like why he's interested in witch trials, but like, if there was not a reason, that's a really good one for him to be haunted by the Salem yeah. trials. Yeah. But that doesn't really work because. Because there's the option where she. We don't all. Always... Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Kayla. Where she doesn't. Right. But oh, then no, he doesn't. Fine. You were saying what I was going to say. Uh, doesn't, what's her name? The, fuck, the little girl. She still has that like creepy yeah. ass doll. 
She does, and that's where I, like, I don't know. That's well, yeah. where it starts to fall apart for me, is what we were right. talking about. Yeah. Like, so wh- why why did she put it on the stove if she wasn't haunted? Why does by... she murder them? Yeah, yeah who right. is she talking to? Because she says, like, oh, she says something about, like, oh, I don't Sorry, I think you're breaking up. I don't know if I want to kill them. We're like, I don't know if I want to get rid of them. Yes. Sorry? Yeah, you were breaking up for a sec. Yeah, basically oh, she's okay. like not sure if she wants to like hurt her family. And she's like, you know what? I think you're right about my family. And then we see the creepy hand yeah. next to her. Like, what was that? That's the thing is like, that to me is like a half-baked <laughs> idea that they threw in. It's like, that is for us, the viewer, to confuse us. Mm. And it is, has, is not at all tied to Andrew's perspective or even the reality of the story. Yeah, and I I, I mean, and I think that. I think perhaps it maybe can give us a different point of view on the ending. Like maybe this did happen, like it did all happen, but like in some freaky supernatural way. Like maybe he wasn't just like hallucinating the whole time. Maybe like it's like a curse. But then demon thing maybe. following him. I don't know. I don't know. But then we have the 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 moment where you see Vince's perspective. Vince MVP. Um, you see Vince. Oh, MVP, dope, dude. Yeah. And it's all like ha- Andrew older talking to no one. Yeah. yeah. And why is Vince the only one in this fucking place? Literally yeah, the that's only That's also person. what I didn't get. And I don't know. I, was- I imagine there are other people living maybe like further into town. Yeah. It's a pretty abandoned town after the factory Ooh. went under, but still, yeah. he's like. But there have to be more people than one. Yeah. Um, I got the sense that was a ghost town that uh, the Little Hope town was now. So I don't know if there was like anyone else living there, and I don't know. I felt like like why was Vince at that bar? There was no one else at the bar even serving him. Like there was no bartender, and that. Yeah. Confused- yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I was gonna throw out like, oh, maybe it's like the anniversary of the. Yeah, but like, like, or the anniversary of the burial or something. But I mm, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, and like, if they had established that, like, I think definitely that could have been like a good explanation. Yeah, because he's yeah. The, he's the boyfriend. Right. But like, he's Tanya's boyfriend. Didn't. Yeah. Yeah, but like they didn't say anything. Yeah. I don't know. His character like did overall confuse me. Like, why? he was there and just why he was so important. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. He's our, I think he's our, our mechanic hint of what's going on. No, I think of, so. Mm-hmm. But like, but like in the universe. Important. Yeah. Yeah. In the universe, why he was there and everything. I don't yeah. know. I, yeah. It, it just like, and they established these like, sort of like weirdly consistent rules where like always it's like, the the Amy in the past or Megan in the past, like the in their little witch garb, like screams in your face and grabs them. And then mm-hmm. like if somebody else is touching you, you get brought back to the flashback as well. And then also like if yours comes whoever's is seen next, then you are next in line to die with your weird little demon thing. Um it just again it felt like oh and then also there's that thing about when you know your your dead self or whatever kills you it like the camera like zooms in on their eye and it says mm-hmm. like some sort of sin or some sort of bad quality with yeah the lock, and then it goes out and i think i don't know what the lock meant especially and yeah. right and there was two it was one for everybody and then two for john or whatever at the very end i mean maybe i, I, I like, assumed maybe again it's like how andrew slash anthony views them yeah. Uh, Maybe. I mean, I assumed it had something to do with, like, the cho- the dialogue options that we were making. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think but so. I, but, like, but I still don't know how that would change much. Right. And it seems like a weird way to convey that. It seems like a weird, like, you know, Telltale, I think, does it well, where often at the end they'll be like, you left this character feeling this way. Or it shows you, like, this mm-hmm. is your choice. These are your choices, and this is the other choice. Like, this one, it's like weird. It like zooms in on their eye. It shows a lock. It says an adjective, and then they die. Um, which again, the like thing, you know, the the guilty trait that was suspicious enough that a jury of their peers sentenced them to hang or burn at the stake. Sure, fair enough. Yeah, I don't. I mean, yeah, and like the other thing I found weird was because again, this is all Andrew 
through slash Anthony's perspective, why were we then able to play and see like the other group? So like right. we chose to go with Angela. Why could we see Taylor and Daniel mm -hmm. and like everything that they were going through and everything that happened with them? Because yeah. it technically shouldn't have been like real, you know? Yeah, no, totally. I mean, maybe it's Andrew sort of imagining what they would be doing or what they would be, but it just is very, yeah. I agree with you. Like the game is kind of, it wasn't really sure if it wanted to be, like it wants you to be able to play as multiple characters. That's like part of the drive and the gimmick that mm -hmm. I actually really like. I right, think, yeah. I think passing the controller around and controlling different characters is a very cool idea. Um, but it also wanted Agreed. to tell one person's story like Man of mm -hmm. Medan was not that. Man of Medan was about everybody and everybody can live or die and they end up in different places based on your choices. Like mm -hmm. that was another thing. It irks me that everybody dies no matter what. Yeah. Um, and people often raise that complaint against like Walking Dead, like Telltale Games. They say, oh, the ending's always the same. Um, and while that is true, like your impact, your decisions still feel like they have impact uh, your journey is different. And also this is like, you know, let's say two hours an episode. This is a 10 hour game. Man, this game is about five hours. It's half the time. So I feel like you can, and you don't have any sequels. I feel like you can really make the endings different and really make and commit to that because you don't have to make another one. So Man of Medan had so many different um, like scenes and different versions of the game you can play like there I've played it like two or three times now and I'm sure there's still so many scenes that I haven't seen yet because there's so many different options so many different pathways you can choose I didn't really feel that with little hope like mm -hmm. I don't know I think there are other scenes like I already went back and watched like a little bit of someone else's stream and there were definitely other things that we hadn't seen but I don't feel it was to the extent of like Man and Medan like Man and Medan there were so many different endings the little hope, I'm like, I feel like there's like maybe two or three possible endings. Max, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that like, it just feels like we're missing too many of the rules, like the inherent operations of the game mm -hmm. for it to really make any impact on how, on how we, how we perceive it. I mean, like, do my choices have an impact? Like, how does that whole mechanic work with the locks? Right. I don't, Mm -hmm. Like, if I side with this character, how, at the beginning, like, when the two girls are fighting, like, how drastically yeah. does that change the rest of the game? Right. I don't know. It doesn't feel like it does at all. Um, but it might. Totally. I also... And there are a I, ton of secrets. There are a ton we didn't get to. There are. Yeah. There, yes, that is one thing they are good at, is leaving little world building, little, like, little secrets, little books, little pictures you can look at and pick up. I like that. Um, mm -hmm. Though, you brought up something... Like, interesting, comparing it to Man of Medan and also other choice-based narrative-driven games, this, I don't feel like this game had a ton of really hard choices. Mm -hmm. Like, there was almost never was I at a point where I was like, oh, no, what do I do? Like, even in dialogue, I was almost always like, oh, that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, the most I felt that was at the beginning when it was between Megan and Tanya, and I was like, oh, my God, who am I picking? Yes, yeah. that and was then, a tough one. And then you find out it, it didn't matter. They're both going to die. No you find what. out within 30 seconds that it <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter. And yeah. then there was not a hard um, Like, that's kind of just how I felt in general about this game. It's like, mm -hmm. really anything you did didn't super matter. And It's also, though, interesting. Because I think you're right. Like, within the game, like, the choices are kind of wishy-washy. But playing it, because we're playing co-op, we actually, like, with Josh, we were like, no, like, pick that. Like, yeah. do not touch a hair on this little girl's fucking head. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but to me, that screams, like, the decision-making that we're all craving. So, you know, it could be that a point of the game is not to make us think about the choices in the moment, but, like, to fight with each other like you would for a witch trial mm. by like forcing us to wow. make a decision Interesting. Are we yeah. after her or are we not i um, like that and, and like I'm... doing that group dynamic and because it yeah. is you know passive that's cool i actually i want to talk more about that but before we do this episode is supported by our patron matan sucks at injustice hey. too if you would like your name to be read on this podcast you can support us at patreon.com slash rewind underscore replay, which is linked in the description below. Thank you, Matan Sucks at Injustice 2. 
Thank All you. Right. That's gone. So now that's a really interesting <laughs> idea, Adriana. The idea that like this game is designed for, for crowdsourcing decisions, but also that that mm -hmm. draws parallels to the witch trials where it was basically like not even really a trial by formal jury, just like uh, everybody kind of throws out their opinion. That's interesting. Group yeah. up. That's yeah, I mean, and I think huh. maybe it wasn't as prominent for us because the three of us do tend to kind of make the similar sim decisions yeah. on these kind of games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be interested to yeah, see like- I wonder group, what it would look like. Yeah, like a group that doesn't fully agree though like it one that's more split that's like no it's mm -hmm. definitely this child that's well, doing this sure because like we i feel like we were all pretty much like nah like it's not the child I mean, she's I was being manipulated somehow i was suspicious of her for a while but i you know i definitely yeah you, you i wasn't gonna I mean, wasn't we gonna can be suspicious of her i wasn't yeah. gonna murk yeah i was suspicious yeah. <laughs> yes i was suspicious but i wasn't going to be like let's murder the child right right um, yeah I want to bring up uh, Telltale's crowd play um, mechanic mm -hmm. that they kind of tried for a while because that's sort of the most analogous to this. Yeah. Um, basically, how that would work, I don't know if you guys have, have used this before. It's only for some of their games, but basically, you you have people go on on their phone, and then when the decisions pop up, um, and not all decisions either. It's like dialogue choices and some story choices, but some of them you still can't vote on. Anyway, so you select you have like your wheel and you select like left right up down of the dialogue choices and you can set it so that you know whichever gets the most vote wins and if they're tied it gets randomized and i played some of the first season of batman that way and that was really fun where we would like argue about them um, and like the timer's running down and then we'd all vote and then it would like get randomized and you could do a thumbs up or thumbs down if you didn't like the way the choice went or you did yeah um, that's fun which is fun but i think like passing the controller around and having different controllable characters is more of a it feels more integral and less tacked on yeah mm -hmm. and like at the end of the day it's your choice no matter what everyone's yelling at you to pick right right there's that too and it's the same for the witch trials yeah exactly. are you gonna are you gonna cave in to the peer pressure to the mass hysteria um and i definitely yeah. felt like it like the game was inflicting in me a little bit of mass hysteria like mm -hmm. it's freaking that's out that's a really good point that's like a yeah. cool merging of like themes and form and i think um, if we go back yeah. to what we said about like our choices not really mattering in the end i think that kind of goes with kind of goes with Andrew's choices not oh, did, Andrew's did choices out? not mattering yeah that's yeah that's so because like wh whatever he chooses like it doesn't matter his he already made his choice just as we already made the choice at the beginning we already played through the beginning and we got everyone killed even if that's what's supposed to happen that's, that's what Andrew already did he already got everyone killed and it doesn't I mean, matter he didn't what do he that does. he didn't set the house okay, fire. Yeah, well, yeah. but he feels <laughs> hey, yeah. okay that's I just but yes, I didn't mean he did it. He feels responsible. <laughs> and that's right. and I agree with you, but that doesn't make for an engaging game. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I don't you. disagree. I think you're right. Like I think that does make sense of like everybody dies no matter what, because that's exactly how Andrew felt in that moment when the house was burning down and he couldn't get anyone out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But he felt he feels like he's failed everyone right. because he couldn't get back inside and save everyone. It's just yeah, it's it's just hard. Like I, I totally agree with you, and I know this isn't what you're saying. It's just hard. Like then, when this game is based around choices, they made this game like they could have made a straight narrative game, and mm -hmm. like that would have made more sense. But they made this game that's built around, you know, the curator says at the beginning, he says like, "Oh, your decisions have choices. People can die or they cannot die." Well, no, actually, everybody. Well, no. <laughs> And, yeah. it, and like again yeah. like man and banana i feel like really nailed it where like you have what your five characters different groups of people can end up on the medan different people can die at different points the endings are very different in yeah. unexpected ways and this may you know again has like max three endings and they're all and it seems like they're very similar because you only have so much wiggle room everybody's already yeah. dead at the start you know at the start of this game and yeah i, I mean i i think there are options that 
they had like the game developers could have pushed more in making those choices matter or you know a la walking dead making it seem right. like they mattered more mm -hmm. um and I mean, you know, they're pushing these games out one after the other, one every year. So I imagine they had more time to prep Men and Down and Little Hope. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't really know. But I am also really wondering how the ending would have changed if we had let Vince in at any point. I don't think we could have. I don't think we could have. No, but there's like sure that option. There? Yeah, like yeah. he was like pounding on the door asking us to like let him in and we told him to go away. I, you're right. Maybe we could have, but I doubt it just because then like, how do you write yourself out it of It would break hole? things. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Right. That's, don't it's know. a good question. Yeah. I'd Maybe be like, in finding yeah, him. yeah. Hmm. We'll have to play it a second time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but this, yeah, despite how much I'm like railing against this game, I had a really good time. Like this game is yeah. really oh. fun to play with mm -hmm. friends. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say something, and yeah, I, I mean, it might not, it might not have been what we were expecting of the of the game, you know, as like another part of the anthology. Like it, it wasn't as choice heavy, but it was mm -hmm. still really enjoyable. Like totally. I, you know, almost had to sleep with the lights on. It was a great Halloween game. Like this, it was, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to see like how. I wonder how far along they are in the next one, House of Ashes, because I'm curious to see how much criticism they can take from this game and, and apply it to the next one. Yeah. I would assume they're pretty well Deep underway. Yeah. 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 And like, I feel like if they're already giving, like, because what they, what they did with Little Help was give us a premonition, and then they did that again with House of Ashes. I feel like they already have to have, like, a pretty strong idea of what the story is to know what the premonition oh, could be. for sure. I'd imagine they've, like, charted them all out, and they've probably... Yeah. Yeah, done a bunch on each of them before even Man of Dan released, but mm -hmm. I just... Yeah. Yeah, like, none of these... I, I did enjoy Man of Dan, but neither of these have really held a candle to Until Dawn for me. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think I'm still holding out hope. I have a little hope. Uh, um, yeah. I'm still holding out hope for how they're going to tie these three together. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to bring in Until Dawn, like if they, if they decide like this is the same universe. Yeah. Because I'm thinking there could be, because we already talked about there are big overlaps with the, the psychiatrist and the curator. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there could be something really interesting there. I just don't know if they're going to do it. I doubt it. I really, I wish I they would. I want them to. I, I, I know, do too. me too. The only, just because like, again, like at the end, this was one guy's imagination in a small town. Like how possibly could they tie this to anybody else? I mean, maybe there'll be like some reference, but like I, the curator is the only through line. And also I don't, I gotta be real. I don't like the curator. Yeah, really I think we're not supposed to. But he doesn't do it. Like, I don't feel strongly. Like, he just kind of stands there and doesn't say anything helpful. It's suspicious. It is. Suspicious. It is suspicious. suspicious. It's suspicious. And so, I'm like, suspicious. I think there there could be something there. You're right. We, yeah. also, we also didn't ask for any hints. He offered hints. Yeah, we're but fucking like, assholes. But we like that's also them. not I don't know, like I thought that the the um the psychiatrist, psych therapist, whatever that Josh had in until dawn had more character mm -hmm. than the curator. The curator walks down mm -hmm. halls to like math rock and then like recites poetry and that's it. <laughs> like yeah. I yeah. it'd be cool if there was more maybe he had more of a through line or like what if he becomes like a character in House of Ashes? Ooh, like that'd be cool. Do something with this. Maybe. Dude. Yeah. yeah. I hope they do. I hope they do, and I'm yeah, I'm excited to see what they do. Yeah, it's. I'm. I like that they're taking on different sort of um, vibe, different sorts of horror, like they did, like the. Yeah, like sort of World War II spooky ghosts kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then they mm -hmm. did witch trials. And next, they seem to be doing something like ancient or like Egyptian, maybe. Egyptian, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the treasure really hunting. Up. Yeah. Treasure hunting, I think, yeah. Um, and 
Caitlin, you don't hear that, you don't know if this is confirmed, but it looks like Ashley Tidsdale is the main character. Yeah, I saw that when I was, like, looking up stuff. Someone said they think it's Ashley Tisdale. Because, like, if you look at the face, it looks just like her. I'd be so into really. that. I don't, I would I don't so know what down. it is. Yeah. The person, like, I read that and then I went and watched it again. I was like, oh my god, wait, I think that is Ashley Tisdale. I don't think they've announced who it is, though. But yeah. It looks like I mean, they it. definitely have it casted already. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be fucking dope. I hope it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, overall, I, I like, even if this game was a little middle of the water -y, um, I like what the anthology is trying to do yeah. with the horror genre, you know, like, the monsters are not what they seem, or we are yeah. the monsters, right? Like, it's, it's people that are scary, not the supernatural. Um, and those are, like, vibes that I dig, so... And mental health themes, like, I, I agree. I, overall, I've had a good time with these. I like what they're doing. Sometimes they don't do it as well as other times, mm -hmm. but I am, I'm definitely going to yeah. be buying and playing House of Ashes. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully together sure. in Hopefully person. Together. <laughs> oh, gosh. We can dream. Oh, gosh. God, yeah. 20, October 2021, I hope so. Do you? <laughs> yeah. God, yeah. literally a year from now, yeah. Um, we are recording this on uh, November 2nd, so hopefully there is a world in which we can publish this this podcast on Friday. Hopefully yeah, there's something man. left. Yeah. I'd say go vote, but it's too late when you're watching this podcast. Yeah. So um, hopefully you did if, you, if you're a U.S. citizen and over 18 and can. Yep. Yep. The truth... <laughs> Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> um, yeah, I am. I like this game. I'm looking forward to the next one, but I would be disappointed if I played yeah. this on my own. I would have been disappointed. Yeah, I think. I agree. Reason, I this think is not a reason, play by yourself. Yeah, I think one of the reasons why I initially, because after talking about it, yeah, I, I agree. I liked Man of Medan more. Um, I think one of the reasons I initially wasn't sure is because I had so much fun playing it together. Yeah. And it was so fresh that I, like, enjoyed playing it with you guys. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I, I think I like this one better but because, because I, I like less gamey games. Like, I like straightforward narrative. Um, mm -hmm. So sure. it wasn't as off-putting. Sure. Um, you guys, uh, for everyone listening, watching, the real test of if your choices matter in a game, exercise your right to vote because life's a game. Make uh, a choice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the real, the real choice-based game is yeah, our The real choice-based game is life. Yeah. Those things always have repercussions. Yeah. Matan will remember that. I almost said that, too. <laughs> I almost said Matan, too, not me, to you. <laughs> that's how we know Matan's the main character. Hey. That's, that is not true. Oh, really? Okay. Oof. Um, <laughs> all right, well, thank you very much, everybody, for watching or listening. Um, we put out podcasts every Friday, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, or on YouTube with the video element. Um, we've been making a lot of other content. Uh, we've got, we've done a lot of tabletop stuff that's going up on our YouTube channel. We've been streaming. Bi-weekly coming to you. Mm-hmm. We've got, uh, we're working on a pod fic, uh, episode two coming soon. This weekend. Um, this weekend. Awesome. So right, so when you're listening to this, it's coming very soon. Um, we've got, what else? Oh, this one, uh, let's talk about our top 10. This is exciting. Yeah. Um, we recorded... Uh, a top 10 games of the last generation video in time just just in time for the new consoles to be released um so we recorded a group yes. really short to the point and then we split us into pairs myself and josh and adriana caitlin and did a little bit of a longer discussion about our personal top 10 games of the last generation uh it was really fun i'm looking forward to, to putting those out um yeah. Anything else? Go fight Matan about his shitty picks. Yeah. I will take no slander. I agonized over that list. I made some tough cuts, so I will oh. not hear slander. It's okay. Our <laughs> list is like almost identical. Yeah, our list was super close. 
That's why um, we were like, Bematon can't can't do the doubles no. together. Right. <laughs> no. Um, but or else it's yeah. gonna be like Naughty Dog PlayStation games. Yeah. Well, well, like I think five of my ten yeah. were PlayStation Four exclusives. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> Um, anything else you guys want to mention before we go? Um, I got a new background. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cute. I made it fall instead of um, Halloween. And my alpaca is back here. I'll get Very you one nice. day. Yeah. All right. And with that, we will catch you next time. Bye. Bye.